I built a new mash tun. It's bigger, badder, bolder, and better than my last one. You want to see more about it? Stick around. Hey everyone and welcome back. So what I have here is a new mash tun I had just recently built uh, prior to my last brew day video I did with Paul and Mike from Home Brewing TV. They came down here and brewed a batch of beer and we had a great time. Well, I briefly showed this new mash tun in that video and made a, a uh, comment that said, if you wanted to see more about this new mash tun, let me know and I'll do this follow-up video. Well, hey, you let me know and this is that follow-up video. So if you'd like to see more about it, hang around and I'll show you what I did. Now you may be wondering why I decided to go ahead and do a version 2 of my mash tun. Well, if you watched uh, a couple of my 10 gallon brew system videos where I uh, struggled a little bit with my batch sparging in the old cooler, it was a little undersized. I ended up having to go into, uh, I think, three sparge and draining steps, which added time to my brew day. I didn't want to add the time. And the reason why I had to do uh, more than two or three Draining steps is because I miscalculated or misestimated the actual capacity of my old cooler. Now that cooler was a cooler I just had on hand in the garage for 20 years, right? It wasn't really much use in it, so I repurposed it. Well, I thought it would, it would have been okay, except uh, it wasn't, as you saw in the videos, but I thought it was okay because it was rated at a 56 quart capacity. Uh, and my old five gallon system with my little orange round cooler was uh, a 28 quart. So I figured, well, I'm going to double batch size. I'll double the mash tun size. Uh, seemed to make sense. Unfortunately, the old cooler only had a 44 quart actual liquid capacity when I actually measured it. And that was disappointing. And that caused the extra uh, batch sparge steps that I had to do. So I finally got tired of it, right? <laughs> I wanted to shave time off my brew day, not, not add to it. So I finally went online to order a Coleman 70 quart extreme cooler, which had the capacity, it was rated at 70 quarts, but the actual liquid fill capacity that I measured was about 65 quarts. Uh, so a lot more than 44, more than I needed. I used my brewing recipe spreadsheet to uh, put in some uh, theoretical uh, high gravity um, recipes through there to, to, to calculate my volumes and, and capacities of my mash time, whether I'd overflow it or not, and it, it was fine. Um, so 65, in fact, 60 quarts of actual availability would have, would have been fine. So that was the reason why I decided to upgrade. Here's the mash time inside the cooler. And you can see the design is pretty straightforward and it covers a lot of uh, area here. There's a lot of straight runs, which are about on uh, two inch centers. And with these extra runs I have in here compared to my old manifold, it's about an 89% improvement in uh, the linear footage of the manifold, which allows a lot more liquid to flow through this thing. And we can start down here where it, where it hooks up here. Now you can see I have a couple el elbows here in the front. I actually had the elbows also back here coming around the, the uh, ends here. But... Um, I found out by having that layout like that, this whole, this whole manifold was able to move back and forth a lot and get kind of off angle and off center, especially when you're stirring probably your, your uh, mash. So what I saw someone else do online, which I'm not taking the credit for, uh, but I, do, I, I did copy this idea, is that I went out and got these little end caps here and on this end here. And it was, and with these T's stacked up back to back like this, joined by small little sections of, of tubing or piping, um, it fits right in there and it sort of self-centers itself. If I zoom out a little bit more here, uh, because of the curvature on the sidewalls and these little pieces here, it, I can't even barely move it left and right, but if I did, it kind of self-centers itself again. So that was a nice little touch I put on there, as well as drilling a few air holes and some of the pieces to allow some air in as it's filling up with water for the very first time. 
I was able to salvage and reuse the, the brass ball valve and washer from the last build and just put it on here. And there you have it, my new mash tun, sitting right here, uh, ready to be used again in the future. So, so for those of you who, have, who are wondering what happened to your old cooler, well, I actually went ahead and converted it back to a cooler. I, uh, I still saved the little plastic spigot that mounts on the side and put it back on. It's sitting on a shelf now to be used as a regular beverage cooler going forward. And going forward, I have this new mash tun to help me out. Now, if you haven't yet seen my original mash tun build, th this thing was built in the same manner as that old mash tun. It's just bigger with longer manifold runs. If you haven't seen that original DIY mash tun video, go check it out. I'll put a link down in the video description down below or maybe up in the cards up here. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below or reach me via any other one of my methods on social media or whatever, right? I'll do what I can to answer them. And if you're a new viewer and not yet subscribed, consider subscribing to my channel. I make videos on brewing and cooking. And if either one of those or both of those interest you, I think you might want to pick subscribe. And if you like this video, just give me a quick thumbs up down there. And other than that, I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.